Hello friends, welcome back to another episode here on the channel. I hope you're all doing great and for anyone new to the channel, my name is Lee, also known as Osiris and in today's episode we are continuing again on with our VGC Series 8 content. Today playing a Ice Rider team. Now we have featured an Ice Rider Color X team already on the channel but we've got a different variant of it today. It's a bit more solid, a bit more well-rounded and something that I would like to feature because it's something I've been playing around with with Mimikyu in particular. Uh, we do have two Trick Room setters on the team and and two Pokemon to help us reverse if we're not in a favorable position uh, in Porygon 2. But Mimikyu, very interesting Pokemon in particular, and one that I did want to feature within this format. It's got a very good speed tiering, uh, 96, outspeeds the majority of the restricted Pokemon. It has access to will o -Wisp, to Trick Room. It also can uh, activate the weakness policy on the Calyrex with Shadow Sneak as well. So you've got that self kind of set up there as well, which is really nice. Um, Zapdos, a very good member of this team, helps kind of clear away a lot of the threats that maybe give Calyrex a little bit of a harder time so you can max with that initially and then go down the Calyrex route to end the game because obviously the Glacial Lance is just ridiculous if you can get that board position set up under Trick Room and then just kind of start chucking those out. Uh, the rest of the team, as you can see, is just well-rounded with the Porygon 2, the Tapu Fini and the Incineroar. Give us lots of nice flexibility, lots of board positioning possibilities as well between those, uh, terrain support, etc, etc. And the team will be down in the description below. As always, there'll be a poker paste down there if you want to check out the actual details of the team, try it out on Showdown or anything like that. And if you stick around till the end of the episode, as always, we'll be throwing up a rental code for this team. So hope you enjoy it if you do try it out and do stick around for it at the end of the episode but without further ado friends hope you enjoyed today's episode let's get into our first one today and find our first opponent <laughs> Okay, so up first we have a Urshifu, Zacian, Incineroar, Lapras, Thunderous, Incarnate, and Regieleki. So, um, it is definitely one of those kind of standard Zacian Lapras teams. You're going to see the Lapras there setting up the, the Aurora Veil, and then the Zacian coming in late game to do its thing. Um, there's a couple of ways we could go about this, and that's stalling out the, the Lapras Dynamax turns. Definitely helps. Uh, deal with it a little bit better maybe using something like Zapdos to um, take advantage of that and we've got the tools to do it within like Incineroar, Tapu Fini and Porygon 2 or Mimikyu if we want um, or we could go straight down a Trick Room route with uh, Mimikyu or Porygon to uh, set a Trick Room up because if you look at my opponent's team they don't really have a very good Trick Room mod, they've got Incineroar that you can bring in and out but the rest of the Pokemon are going to struggle pretty hard in trick room so i think that's not a bad option for us to to go down um but we need ways to kind of i guess tackle the lapras in in, uh, in a certain respect okay i'm gonna bring mimikyu i think we'll bring um, bring incineroar calyrex and Tapu Fini to this one probably not p2 but p2 is also going to be like it would be a good option uh, all the time, you know, to just bring in and have that option to kind of soak damage up, give you a little bit of room, stall things out, recover. It's quite nice, but then there are some big threats on my opponent's team, especially if we see the Thunderous as the max option here. I don't suspect we will, uh, but the Zacian as well is going to be something that we're not really going to be able to hit for very good damage, and it's going to hit us for, for super effective, whereas other options on our team might be a little bit better. So... Mimikyu and the Incineroar. So this is quite a good lead for us, to be honest, because we've got the um, the Urshifu coming out and the Zacian. And we've got a, a really easy way for us to set a Trick Room up, turn one if we want. So we can, we're pretty safe, to, to be honest. I feel like the Zacian probably switches out here. Um, I'd be more inclined to fake out the Urshifu here. Now the worst case scenario would be if we see the Urshifu switch out for Incineroar and a substitute on the, the Zacian. That would be the worst case scenario, but it's kind of risky for my opponent to do that because we can just, uh, we're gonna see it, okay. We may see a Protect here. The Incineroar definitely coming in. Uh, hopefully we don't see the sub, because the sub makes things difficult, especially with the fake out. This is what I mean with the Incineroar coming onto the field now for my opponent. Yeah, I think we will see a sub, unless we see them attack, which makes things a little bit easier for us, for sure. Um, we do. Behemoth Blade coming out. Okay. Well, we'll take that all day long. Yeah, I mean, that is fine. 
uh, the Incineroar are going to be able to attack us before we're able to get uh, the Will-O-Wisp off. But we've got the Will-O-Wisp into the Zacian slot now, which is which is so huge for us, you know? So I think what we'll do is we will parting shot. Mm, do we parting shot? Are they going to fake out? They could fake out, you know. They could definitely fake out. I think what we'll do is we'll get Calyrex onto the field. We'll go for the Will-O-Wisp into the Zacian. There's no way that my opponent's going to go for a, a Flare Blitz into our Incineroar. Worst case scenario is they parting shot into it. But then we do have access to uh, the Shadow Sneak the next turn. Um, into our Calyrex. We'll see what my opponent does. I could imagine seeing the Zacian maybe protect here. That would be a definite option for them. Or withdraw it. But whatever comes in at this point is going to get burnt, you know? So I kind of don't mind the Lapras coming in. Yeah, there's the fake out. Stopping our Incineral getting that parting shot off, which is fine. And we get the Will-O-Wisp into the Lapras. Now, whatever comes in, we've got my opponent pinned here. Because whatever comes in on that Incineral slot, right? Whatever comes in is going to get taken down by a Max Quake. And we're boosting... A defense along the way which is exactly what we want to be doing so we'll max quake into there zassian comes in it's going to get nuked the urshavu comes in it's going to get hit pretty hard and if the incineral stays in then they lose their intimidate user <clears throat> and a way to kind of neuter uh calyrex so all in all we're sitting in a pretty nice position here now the lapras we've got to be a little bit concerned about of course because uh it is going to be able to kind of chip away at whatever we've got next to uh, our Calyrex. Um, the big thing here for me would be if we can preserve Mimikyu, because then if if we take the Urshifu down at Sash, like we kind of expect that we're going to do here, then at least um, we'll be able to pick it up with the, the Shadow Sneak the next turn, which is, which is always very useful. But if it's not Sashed and we pick up the Knockout, then that's huge for us. So let's see what my opponent goes for the Lapras. I think they'll go for um, get their Aurora Veil up, whatever it's called. I can't remember. You know, I always have it like it's at the tip of my tongue. Tip of my tongue. We'll find out in a minute. I've used Lapras enough. I should know. You know. So there's this sneak. Yeah, we'll do a nice little chunk of damage. The opposing Intimidate definitely helping us out there. Um, you know, we could have set the uh, the, the, the hailstorm up and went. I but I think that the, the, the special defense boost is way more useful in this scenario. Um, we do see it is sashed, so it's fine. What are we gonna see from you, Lappy? G Max Resonance. That's the one. There we go. Here it comes. Can Mimikyu take this? Depends if it's life orb. Oh, we take that like a champ. Mimikyu. Yeah. The special defense boost helping us out to no end. So, I mean, we're kind of pinning the, the Urshifu here because the Shadow Sneak, uh, we are slower than it. So, in Trick Room, um, really helping us out a bunch. Um, and we're not going to get taken down by another um, I don't really want to proc a weakness policy. Like, the, the option is what we could do is go Max Hailstorm. If they protect, then they're in a pretty bad position. But I could also see maybe the Incineral coming in on that side of the field. We'll go for Max Quake into the Lapras. Just boost their defenses a little bit more. Yeah, the Incineral are going to come back in. Hmm. Okay, well. Get that Intimidate off. Just, it's fine. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Doing zero we could have played it a little bit better maybe going for like a, a play rough into that slot but i would worry about maybe a sucker punch coming into calyrex we don't really want to take any unnecessary damage that's the big thing so we do get the max quake off into the lapras um we're gonna go for max geyser yeah and get the rain up but we can overwrite that the next turn if we want i mean my opponent's kind of locked with the incineral again they're in that situation where they bring in Urshifu there and if they do I think what we'll do is ooh, the hydration healing that burn very nice um yeah I think we shadow sneak incineral 
and we double tap that target. So if the Urshifu comes back in there to kind of be sacked on another Max Quake, okay, it's not going to. But we kind of cover that slot anyway and take down the Incineroar. It's just then the Max Quake would be diverted into the Lapras. So that was the that was the thinking there. But we'll take down the Incineroar. We'll get an attack boost so mitigate that Intimidate drop there, which is nice. We've got to keep in mind though that our Intimidate um, our Trick Room turns are running out. So we kind of want to see the Mimikyu go down here. That would be the, the perfect scenario for us. Here comes that Max Geyser, but not going to really touch anything. Mimikyu will go down, so we lose our Trick Room uh, user, but it's fine. It's fine, because we'll get... Yeah, the Dimensions do turn back to normal, which isn't ideal. Uh, we've still got Tapu Fini, but we do have Incineroar. Incineroar is like a big player here, I think. You know, we're plus two with Calyrex, and I want to say close combat should get the Lapras. Should get the Lapras. The Urshifu. Coming in. We got one more turn of Max. Of our Max. No. No we haven't. Uh, it would have been better to maybe get the Hailstorm up. And then we could have. We could have got rid of the Urshifu. But I mean we're still pressuring the Urshifu anyway. It's just the next turn. Where it becomes a little bit tricky. Um, where we could predict a Protect. On the Urshifu. I think we probably do. Switch Incineroar out for Finny. And go for a... Yeah, go for a close combat into Lapras. Because we want, really, with the Zacian being the last Pokemon, we want to kind of preserve that Intimidate for later on in this game. The worst case scenario here is if they double into Glastria. And I don't know if they're going to be able to pick up the knockout with a close combat and, and Hydro Pump. They're minus one. Yeah, they protect. This is fine. Yeah, they're going after the Finny. So they it does miss, but that's a little bit unfortunate for them. Okay. That's fine. Um, so. Ooh, we've got the rain up as well. So, I mean, Tapu Finny's in a pretty nice position. Um, also, Glastria is as well. We've got another attack boost. So, we're sitting plus four. It's just, you know, we're not really in a... A favorable position here where if we had trick room on 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 Calyrex, then we'd be in a much better position um, hmm. I think what we could potentially do is because uh, they're gonna go sacred sword I'm gonna go sacred sword for sure I think we got muddy water and we switch in incineral we shouldn't go down they're probably going to double up though into into this slot. They're probably going to double up. We would have been probably better off keeping Calyrex on the field, maybe. But then you risk the plus one Behemoth Blade onto Tapu Finny, and we take a bunch of damage. So at least we're kind of mitigating it that way. And I think Finny might be the key to us winning this game uh, going forward, potentially. Yeah, we take. Oh, far too much damage there, which is, you know, that's, yeah, so, and the Wicked Blower, is it going to come out into Finny? Yeah, when we take that, so, I'll proc our Wiki Berry. Okay, well, we're in a decent position now, Finny, coming in clutch here for us, the Muddy Water, do connect, which is perfect, Rain Boosted as well onto the Zacian, which is always useful, and then Incineroar in a nice position now where we can... Potentially fake out Calm Mind uh, or fake out Muddy Water. Um, I think we probably take the opportunity to Calm Mind. The rain's not going to last forever. We'll fake out as well. And then we can just double tap into it. And they have to... Like, Calm Minding here makes them just, like, take away all of the concentration at the moment to the Incinero, like from the Incinero to the Tapu Fini because the Tapu Fini becomes a bit more of a threat. So it can create an opening for us where we can protect with Fini this turn, go for a Flare Blitz into the Zacian, and then we've still got options. What well, I mean with the rain stopping now, it makes it even more difficult for my opponent because the Flare Blitz will just take it down. So we've kind of locked this one up to start with. And um, it's quite a nice game to kind of 
kick off with today. Close combat shouldn't. Should. Oh, it does. Wow. Oh, okay. Okay. Now that sh makes it a little bit more tricky. But again, we've still got uh, we still got the backup. I didn't expect that to take us down. They must be adamant. Must be adamant. Yeah. So. Yeah, must be adamant. Oof. 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 Because normally a jolly one will we will survive on just neutral, you know. Um. So where are we gonna see? Like, what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? What are you gonna do? Where are you going? Where are you going? Just click the muddy water. Will the moon blast get it? Probably not. Probably not. <laughs> Probably not. So we'll have to go for this. Hopefully, it is gonna be enough to uh to uh to get this one. So we'll see. Behemoth blade coming out into Calyrex. We actually take it. Calyrex Cal is a beast. It's an actual beast. I didn't expect us to take that, you know. I know they're like neutral, but still, that's nuts. We do hit the muddy water, and we we managed to eke this one out, even though it looked a bit a bit too close at the end. But like I said, it's a nice team comp to go up against with this one to start out with, because you know generally you're looking at that team and thinking it's pretty. It's a pretty difficult one for us to approach, especially the Zassian makes it difficult for Calyrex to. Uh, to do all the all the things that you kind of want it to be doing but um yeah very good game to my opponent nice one for us to kick off with today and uh, like i say hopefully it shows a little bit of the team and how he can ap approach that sort of matchup because i think it's a, it's a very difficult one and like i think more than anything against the lapras teams it's patience and having that like kind of uh forward thinking like game plan for where you want it where you want the game to end up and where you can make opportunities like when i was saying we've got our opponent pinned here with the incinera on the field you know they can't switch it out uh if they do so anything coming in is going to take a bunch of damage and the urshifu at that point took so much damage uh they switched out obviously the next turn but we were kind of just pinning that slot we weren't really worried about the the um the lapras so those are the board, board positions that you kind of want to try and achieve against those teams anyway <laughs> We've got another team, and this Pokemon, Zamazenta, that we're about to go up against, we will be featuring this week. So I've got a very spicy team that I'm ve I'm really looking forward to. So make sure you do keep an eye on the channel this week uh, for that one, because it's a bit of a forgotten restricted. We'll get into it in a minute, but like I say, I'm not going to go on too long about it, because we will be featuring it later on this week. Excited, though. So team up next is Zamazenta, Venusaur, Glastria, Garchomp, Porygon2, and Torkoal. So... Uh, it, it's an interesting concept because you've got the Zamazenta that's there supporting Pokemon. It's got access to Wide Guard. It's got access to Coaching. Lots of support options. Uh, you've got the Venus or Torkoal mod as well, which makes things pretty difficult for us to um, to operate, especially a Trick Room mod uh, for ourselves. I think you know that Zapdos is like generally quite good here. So I think Zapdos and Cinnaroar as a lead isn't bad. Um, and then I think probably Calyrex for sure we want. Um, do we want Tapu Finio? Do we want Porygon 2 or Mimikyu? Um, Mimikyu is going to... I mean, the, the, the burn will be nice from Mimikyu for sure. Uh, the disguise could be quite good for Urson. But I think overall, I'd probably lean more towards P2. Uh, we've got to be very careful around the fighting uh, stab from Zamazenta. But I feel with the stabs that we've got with Zapdos and Incineroar... We've kind of got enough firepower there to put a lot of pressure on it and make it like uncomfortable, at least on the field. You know, it's getting the defense boost. Fair enough against Incineroar. But against Zapdos, if the sun's up, we do have the max flare. We've got the life orb as well. Venusaur's going to find it very difficult to hit Zapdos for decent damage outside of max ooze. Um, so we've got some nice options. Glastria is not the Pokemon we want to be seeing. But at least at the same time, you know, we've got Incineroar coming out. Um, and we've got the Intimidate. The problem would be here is if we see Coaching from Zamazenta onto the, the Glastria. Um, and it maxes this turn. There's a minus one max Hailstorm going to get Zapdos. We're not bulky. We're not bulky. And the thing is, what we probably want to be doing is going max Airstream. So the next turn... The next turn, we, we get the jump on, on Zamazenta. Because at the moment, we're not going to be able to. And a max airstream is not going to be enough to do it. But we've got to kind of think a little bit. I think we I think we're kind of forced to. I don't think a max flare is going to be enough. Uh, we've got max... 
Uh, and we'll go for fake out into Zamazenta. So we need to go Airstream, I think. I, I think we need to get the jump on that uh, Zamazenta this this turn. Because if we don't, we can't we can't let the Glastria get the coaching boosts because then it's going to be going to be near impossible to deal with. And we just got to hope if we do see it max here, then a minus one is not going to be enough to get us. We're not seeing it max, which is which is which is useful. Um, the airstream should still do a good chunk of damage. We put it in range for a max flare, at least, you know. Um, what are we gonna see it go for? Bicycle sphere. Okay. Yeah, well, I mean, minus one. Hopefully, it doesn't hit all five times. The ideal if it just hit two, three. Come on, no more, no more. <laughs> Come on, stop hitting us. There we go, four times. Not what we wanted, but but kind of dealable. Okay, Max Flare and Flare. We have to Flare Blitz it as well. We have to Flare Blitz and we have to Max Flare it. We have to get rid of it here because if we see like what I'm expecting to see, then if it gets set up, we are going to be in a bunch of trouble. So we just got to, like, I know, this is the thing with, with Zamazenta, you know, we've got no concentration right now. We're not worried about what it's doing because we're pretty in the mindset that it's just going to support whatever's next to it. So we've got, it opens up a lot of opportunities for your opponent if they can kind of see through what your opponent's thinking. Like right now, we feel very, like, super worried about that Glastria. So my opponent could easily switch that out and go for, like, a close combat into, into Incineroar. But we're probably just going to see the Glastria protect here. Unless it is a Salt Vest. I don't think it is, though. I think we would have done more down. Oh, okay. Hoo hoo. Well, okay. It does survive. So it is a Salt Vest. But doubling up into it was the only option that we had there. We had to double up into it. So we've had two max turns. But we get rid of, like, probably one of the biggest threats on my opponent's team. To ourselves, anyway. Because I think... Uh, P2 is going to set the Trick Room up, which is, isn't too bad, alright, it's not the worst. Uh, Zamazenta coming in is going to be pressured because we've got the Airstream boost. Venusaur could be a bit tricky, but I don't see it having a way to knock out Venusaur um, and avoid taking a max Airstream. And if they do bring the Venusaur in, they've got a couple of options where they can max, can go after Incineroar, take an Airstream, or they can go Sleep Powder. Ah, okay, this makes it a bit more tricky for sure. Uh, I mean, we can double up into P2. I just worry about, like, I think the Torkoal has to protect. It has to protect. You have to protect your Torkoal here. Like, if we can get rid of the P2 now with a Flare Blitz. And a max lightning. I think that would be incredible. The problem is if we lose Zapdos to an eruption, if they don't protect the Torkoal. Okay, they're going to max the Torkoal, looks like. Unless it is P2. They could max P2 for sure. <sighs> Let's see what they do. Nah, it's a Torkoal. Okay. Well, we're going to lose Zapdos. We're going to see potentially a Trick Room set up. Is it the worst thing in the world, though? I don't think so, because we've got P2 to come in, kind of reverse the trick room. We should still have... <laughs> Protect P2! Are you are you actually kidding? Are you actually kidding? Well, at least we're not going to see the trick room set up, which is... which is That's a good thing. It's a good thing. Max Quake could be a little problematic for us here, uh, but it means that Zapdos gets to stick around another turn. Protect P2. Have you ever seen that? Ever? Never. I've never seen it. Okay, so we've got to be very... Oh, I mean, we survived that. That's... Okay. Surprised. I am very surprised that we survived that. Um. All right. Well, do we sack? Do we sack? I think we'll get P2 in. I think we'll get P2 in. I think we'll go for... Do we Snarl here? Do we Snarl? Snarl might be a better option in general. Because parting shots, great and all. But 
I think Snarl in general is probably going to be a little more useful. Um, because I see this turn, probably Trick Room, probably Max, uh, Max Flare again. So we get the special attack boost, which is super useful. We get the Snarl hit, which again is very useful. Uh, what we're gonna see? What we're gonna see? Max Flare. Yep. P2 should tank this. Yep. 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 And the Trick Room. Don't mind this one little bit. Not now. And I don't feel like I need to remove. Um. Let's recover with P2. Let's go for a Snarl. I don't want to take too much damage with P2. That's a thing, you know. Like, we don't want to be in a position next turn where we're going to take, like, eruption damage. Even though they'll be on minus two, technically. I kind of want to just keep P2 as um, healthy as possible as we see a foul player. And that's an interesting option on P2. Like, foul player I do like. I haven't really featured it on the channel yet. I do like, but I do feel like it leaves you a little bit restricted against some options. Whereas, you know, the tri attack, ice beam. Kind of covers most stuff, whereas the bald beam combo is still probably my preferable option. Um, okay, well we've done a good job of stalling this out, and then Zama's enter in the back. We really do, all we need to do is kind of preserve Incineroar for for that uh, matchup, and I think we're in a good spot where we can just try attack, um, parting shot out onto the P2 because yeah, we'll get the free switch out. Body press? Have you ever? Okay, well, that just just, just proc a berry. So that's why the max flare wasn't doing so much. Which makes a lot of sense with Zamazenta when you think about it if you're coaching, you know. But this should do a good chunk. If not nearly pick up the knockout there. Yeah, we'll get it the next turn. Another foul play. Which is fine. The big thing is we want to just preserve this Intimidate because Zamazenta coming in. Um, still going to be a threat you know um so minus one becomes less of a threat okay do we get calyrex in now i think calyrex isn't a bad option especially if the trick room ends which it should do the following turn and then we can just icicle oh a glacial lance but there's a very good opportunity for my opponent to potentially bring in zamazenta here um sun fading yeah let's just check this trick room what have we got? Oh, we got two turns. Okay, so we're going to have to be a little bit more careful. Uh, we'll go for the try attack again. Um, I mean, are they even going to be able to take down Calyrex? I don't think they are, but they will go for. They'll go for a. Um, they'll go for a foul play. They'll go foul play. Undoubtedly, into Calyrex. Just got to buy that time a little bit with this one because it's like it's a little it's still a little bit tricky and you kind of don't want to i think the next turn i don't think we switch in incineroar i think we switch in um zapdos and sack zapdos because we don't want to switch okay oh we could have got a glacial lance off could have could have should have <laughs> but we get rid of the the uh the talk or which makes life a lot easier for us um in general because we've got the turn now where we can potentially go um, Incineroar for P2. High horsepower. Or do we just leave? Um, defense boost makes it difficult when we haven't really got a clean way to kind of hit Zamazenta. But how much damage are they going to do? to us like the option is we could chase down this p2 really you know glacial lance try attack would be able to get it yeah let's just do that let's just do that let's see what the zamazenta goes for we have got the weakness policy as well so we do have the option where we can potentially set a trick room up again if we want I'm not going to get the P2, but we do pick up the Paralysis, which is useful. Uh, goes for the Recover. So that's a nice play from my opponent. I thought we'd pick up the Knockout onto it, honestly. Behemoth Bash. We can 
I don't know. I don't think it's going to pick up the knockout onto us. Could be wrong. Very wrong. Wow. Wow. That does a lot of damage. That does so... Oh, it's a crit. Okay. It's going to say, because like Behemoth Blade, neutral, didn't take us down. So was, we're not expecting that to take us down like one little bit. Uh, this makes things a bit more tricky because we kind of need our trick room here. Yeah, we need trick room up. Um, do we need to fake our trick room? I don't know if we're going to be able to actually win this because I think the problem is like Zapdos is so low health at the moment. And the problem is they could they could trick room on us. Um, Lightning Steel. It's like the worst type for us. We need to trick room. I'm going to fake out. If they trick room as well, then we're in a bit of trouble. But they could trick room the next turn. The best scenario is, yeah, the protect... Oh, okay. We're not going to see them reverse the trick room, which is useful. So we'll fake out Zamazenta. Like a Flare Blitz as well is not going to... Um... A Flare Blitz isn't going to be enough to get the... the... Zamazenta from this range either. What we could potentially do is switch in Zapdos so we've got the Intimidate cycle once again. Because I think one-on-one -on -one our P2 will probably beat the opposing P2 with the special attack boost that we've got. We can kind of out-damage it. With the Paralysis as well, it makes it a little bit easier. I think we would have been better, honestly, probably trying to maneuver a board position where we could get Incineroar next to P2, get the Trick Room up, and then get Calyrex in... Uh, as an end game once the trick room's set and then we can pressure the Zamazenta a little bit better than what we had been doing. So we'll see what the Zamazenta goes for. Like the best case scenario is it starts close combating um, because it's lowering its defenses then which is yeah, which is exactly what we want. This is ideal. They're going to reverse the trick room as well but we're going to be in that spot again where we can fake our trick room um, and the mind games start then so we might not even go for that. Well we kind of have to. It's paralyzed, so we still got the trick room up, which is ideal. Okay, so we're gonna get like that win con here is to get the trick room, reverse the trick room. Now, do we call a protect on? Do we call a protect on the Zamazenta? Or not? It hasn't protected yet. Might not even have Protect, you know. It's just if we don't, right? If we don't call it. If we go, if we like double into it now and we see the tr Trick Room reverse, then we lose Incineroar. That's the big thing. But if we fake out the P2 and they Protect, then we've got a way better chance of closing this game out. But I think, nah, I think just, we've not seen the Protect so far. I think we just double into Zamazenta. Yeah. Okay, come on, Flare Blitz. Be enough. Be enough. Be enough. Come on, be enough. Yeah, there we go. Okay, we can win this one now. We can win it. It's fine. Okay, no Protect. All right, I don't expect there was a Protect. I hate those situations that on another paralysis, which is really unfortunate for my opponent, because uh, they're trying to reverse the trick room. That that's exactly what they they're going for. Now they can reverse the trick room all they want now, um, and I think we'll just do flare blitz. Uh, we're kind of weakening ourselves, so there's not much point. I think we'll keep Incineroar around in the field a little bit longer if we can, but the battle's cancelled. So, good game to my opponent. A little bit unfortunate with the paralysis, but I think, like, it just shows how difficult Zamazenta is. You know, it's a really underrated Pokemon at the minute. As I say, I'm very excited. We'll be featuring it later on this week. So, um, yeah, do, do check it out. But, I mean, just from that match there, you can see how difficult it is to deal with. And it's a very strong Pokemon. And the crit was maybe a little bit unfortunate, but maybe it was a little bit like we should have been paying more attention to a better endgame situ situation than what we kind of were creating in that in that sense. So um, there's two ways to look at that one. Anyway, friends, hope you've enjoyed today's games. I'm going to jump over now and get that rental code for you all. Okay, friends, here is the rental code for today's team. It is the 
Calyrex, Ice Rider, Mimikyu, Incineroar, Tapu Fini, Porygon 2, and Zapdos. We've got to see pretty much most of the Pokemon on this team today do something in the couple of matches. We've got to see the, perform the team perform in the way that I kind of wanted it to. I think we had uh, Zacian and Zamazent, are both pretty tough matchups for our restricted Pokemon. Came out on top on both of them, so I think really good examples in this episode. We've got high rated players as well. You know, they're all in the top like 300, what we played today, so doing very well. Um, and generally, a team I think it would be really beneficial for a lot of you to try out. There's a lot of different things in here. There are a lot of similarities and stuff that you're going to see on a lot of teams, like the Incineroar, Tapu Fini, and the Porygon 2. But Zapdos not seen so much. Definitely a nice option. And the Mimikyu, very rarely seen. But something valuable to play, you know? The Mental Herb, you've got the Trick Room. Counteract Tailwind, you've got the Will-O-Wisp, which is so valuable in this format. Uh, Shadow Sneak to proc, weakness policy ch chip like sashes and things like that, and play rough. You know, fairy type attacks in this format are generally quite good with the amount of dark types that we've got on the format that are kind of tending to be on the, the more dominating side of things. Um, and then Calyrex, which is just the best. I would say both Calyrex versions are amazing. I probably prefer the Shadow Rider, but the Ice Rider definitely is probably number two in this format for me. I think both forms are just ridiculous. Uh, their signature attacks are amazing. So whatever you do, have fun with the team, friends. I hope you've enjoyed today's episode. As always, thank you so much for tuning in, all the support that you give the channel. I can't say how much I appreciate it. And uh, I'll catch you later in the week for more Pokemon action, VGC. And we're going to have some special stuff because it is Pokemon Day this week coming up. Not long, friends. Hope you're all looking forward to that. And uh, some spicy announcements but i'll see you later on in the week so take care of yourselves friends have a great day whatever you're up to and uh, i'll see you for the next one so until then take care bye bye